everyone welcome to my june favorites slightly belated but better later than never so it seems that the first part of this video unfortunately hasn't been recorded for whatever reason uh, but i am starting here with this beautiful pencil case that i have seen on natasha newton's recent um whole videos and i'm absolutely in love with it so carry on watching and so this is why I kind of can look at the colors and have a very good um, sort of understanding exactly what color I need because when they're laid out flat rather than stuck in a glass or a glass jar, which is what I had um, um, them organized in before, which worked in a way that it was looking pretty on my desk. I really liked seeing those pencils. But when it came to picking out colors, I find that the best I can do that with is my luminance and so i'm intending to keep my luminance for now anyway maybe that will change um still in this jar and um, keep them on my desk and i can easily grab the colors that i want and i kind of understand the colors much better and i know the colors much better but when it comes to these pencils maybe because i had a lot more of them i don't know but especially polychromos i haven't been really using uh, for a while because they are the, the hardest pencil out of the pencils that I own. Not to say that they are hard, they're beautifully pigmented and they're not like dry or anything, but they just compared to the other pencils, they are a little bit harder. So I hope that will uh, make me use the polychromos more often, but also have a better overview of all the colors because I have a lot of them from the Derwent uh, Light Fast. So I really enjoyed that. I will try to leave a link below if you're interested. So it's got these zippers. It also had a little wrist attachment, but um, I mean, you're going to break your wrist if you're going to attach it to your wrist like that. So that came off. I, I don't like any sort of additional dangling things, even in handbags when they come with it, I just take everything off. Okay, let's now focus on the uh, swatching part of the thing. So I will start with pencils and then we'll move on to watercolor. I have two types of pencils today to share as my June favorites. Um, I have luminance colored pencils and I also have Museum Aquarelle um, watercolor pencils. So both of them are by Karen Dash and I have really really enjoyed them. These colors in particular have really spoken to me so let's start with the colored pencils. I'll start with the lightest. So as you'll see it's sort of like a pinky gray um, color scheme here and I have really enjoyed that. So Sienna or oh, Burnt Sienna 10%. I really like the color but I don't like the texture of it. I said this many times before it's kind of um, very dry. You can see it's uh, it doesn't lay creamy as the others. It has this sort of very um, yeah not a, not a nice texture to work with. It's hard to build up there's some sort of resistance and it actually like starts to scratch the paper where you're not getting much pigment out of it but you are making a uh, dance in the paper so it's a bit of a bummer um, I do wish I had this like color in a better better texture uh, next color I have here is ultramarine pink um, so this is a color I have recently added and there is a whole video coming, I think, um, the Monday after this video. And uh, you will see that I have added that pencil in that hole. And um, this was also inspired by Natasha Newton. I think this is one of the colors she added recently. Now, ultramarine pink is not a color I thought I would enjoy. It kind of felt like it might be similar to that cobalt uh, violet type of a color, sort of like a dirty pinkish color, which I don't really like. This is very nice. It's like a blue pink kind of, of a color. Now let's dive into our grays. This is a beautiful 
lighter version of a color that I will swatch next. So this is Payne's Gray 30% and this one is Payne's Gray 60%. So they sit very beautifully next to each other. And then of course I could not not include uh, dark indigo. I have been using it in every <laughs> of my illustration. You can see it's getting shorter and that's a very good sign for me because I usually uh, don't use, if I use pencils, I don't use that much of them purely because my illustrations are so, on such a smaller, like the face um, elements are on such a small scale that I don't need that much of it. Um, so for me to go through a pencil to get it to this size, it means that I'm literally like using it a lot. Um, so yeah, I started using it, apart from the face, um, I started using it in like um, body and, and kind of outfits and all of that, but more on that later. Not in this video, I will be um, revealing soon something quite exciting, but we have to wait a little bit. Um, so then the next thing we have here is the um, Museum Macquarell. So this color is sepia 10%. So again, on a gray kind of theme or carrying on with the gray theme. Now these are different. So the first ones were colored pencils. These are watercolor pencils. And so they work um, as watercolor and a pencil in one. Burnt Sienna 50%. Um, we'll show you next. I really liked this sort of combo with the two of them. But if I wanted to warm it up a little bit, I also enjoyed adding cinnamon into this duo. And that warms it up beautifully. And works really well with those two colors. So I will use a bit of water to show you what uh, what you get. Let's see now what this looks like with water. The pigment in these Museum Aquarelles is just gorgeous. I will leave a bit of the pencil just so we can see. And the it's the only watercolor pencils that I have tried where the pigment can be completely dissolved and doesn't stay on paper. I mean these in my opinion are the best watercolor pencils. They really are quite unique and I have read somewhere, heard, this was a while ago, that the it's they actually use pigment, watercolor pigment in the um, in the pencils and this is why they're so uh, they work so beautifully and once they dry on paper they actually look like a used watercolor rather than pencil so you have that uh, flexibility of perhaps working um, on a detail as it is a pencil you can get it sharper and then you can you know move the pigment a little bit into that watercolor um, aesthetics. Right, so the next thing also you will see in the haul, um, I have finally purchased the Blackwing Matte, so this is the soft pencil. In my opinion, it is a gorgeous thing to look at, but also it feels so good. Um, if I just do some sort of... Um, just to show you, I mean, you can get it really, really thin, and then thicker um, as you go. So it's really nice and dark. It's super soft, but it does keep the point quite well, keeping in mind that it, it is a soft lead. So I absolutely love it for that reason. You can do bits, bits of doodling with it, but also, um, you know, draw and paint and all of that sort of thing really enjoyable and then um, the eraser is actually detachable you can buy 
um, more erases but this one will last you a long while because every time you use up a bit of it you just kind of pull it out until you use up pretty much most part of the eraser and um, that way it's, it's very good and the actual eraser is, is quite um, good because generally the erasers that you get with pencils they aren't great at all so this one is quite good. As I have taken time to write down all the names um, <clears throat> I thought I'll also um, show you the box that it came in so it's a set of 12 and it says here soft graphite pencil so it's a regular um, graphite pencil but um, there's something slightly different about the graphite um, it's not just the experience of kind of holding the pencil um, you know and it being quite nice the the actual graphite um, is um, is a Japanese graphite and it says here crafted with California incense cedar wood so basically um, it's not just your regular pencil and this pencil has been used by many architects and um, interior designers and illustrators and people just absolutely loved it and this pencil was discontinued at one point because they had to do um, some uh, financial uh, changes um, to the brand and um, a lot of people missed this pencil to such an extent that they started like trying to to find and buy one and these pencils were going down for like $40 on eBay at one point and people actually were so desperate to get this pencil that they were willing to pay that much for just one pencil and so um, this pencil was brought up or rather brought back by um, I guess another company and it's it's been back and even now it's a little bit difficult to get it you can't just get it everywhere and um, I've been waiting to get this pencil for a while on Jackson's it's been out of stock um, and they are now back in stock so I wanted to share that with you just in case you wanted to get it um, and I will leave the links down below as well and like I said this is the soft let's move on to watercolor so for the watercolor <laughs> I uh, shamelessly will um, share the fact that this has been my favorite uh, watercolors and I absolutely enjoy them so these are the tropical palette which I think by the time you are watching this video they there would have been a restock and I don't know if it still would be available uh, in my Etsy shop Alona Creates uh, do have a look just in case you might find something else there you like um, and yeah I mean these colors have been so so enjoyable to work with so there are four colors coral reef And just in case they are sold out again, because they do sell out very quickly, the first batch was sold out within like less than an hour. It was sold out in I think half an hour. And yeah, so I won't be restocking it until probably September now. Second color is Caribbean Breeze and I love mixing them together. I'll show you just in case you're new. If you're not new then you would have seen those already but I'll show you the mixes you can get and things like that. This is seaweed. You have to wait for them to dry to see the full beauty because they start to separate and granulate in the most gorgeous way. So you can see here in the lid is basically how they act and behave. Now this is one um, lightly shimmery color in this set. 
and it works really pretty with all of them kind of together. Well, since I have a bit of um, a bit of space here, I might just play around and mix them a little. And see what happens. So this color that you get here is incredibly pretty but again you have to wait for it to dry and now you can start seeing all this gorgeous granulation that's happening just bring it up closer to you okay so let me just write down the color names and wait for them to dry and uh, we'll look at everything um, a bit closer all right, so let's look at the individual colors. So at the top we have colored pencils, luminance, and they are, so if we start with burnt sienna 10%, ultramarine pink, paints gray 30%, paints gray 60%, and dark indigo. Then we have museum aquarelle, which are watercolor pencils, both by Karen Dash. Sepia 10%, burnt sienna 50%, and cinnamon is a lovely warm color to introduce in this sort of color palette if you wanted to warm things up a little bit. Um, but otherwise, you can see it's sort of grays and pinks, and these sort of colors are a little bit on the warm side, but I find that a touch of cinnamon gives it even more warmth. Black wing matte, and remember this is a soft. And there are other um, pencils uh, that they have like a different color. So this is a black one, and the others are I think there is a white and like um, actually similar to just like a wood color and a different and like pink I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a pink um, eraser, and those are different. Um, strength or hardness of the um, graphite so um, this one is the black one matte is a soft and that's the the classic pencil then we have tropical palette which are my own handmade watercolors they are vegan and um, we have coral reef caribbean breeze seaweed and black pearl um, I'll try to link a few videos up here or at the end of the video um, where you can see all these colors again if you're new to it and you ha if you haven't seen them yet, um, how they all behave, all the swatches and in-depth um, looks and everything. And here is what Coral Reef and Caribbean Breeze looks together. This is like my favorite combo. You can get so many different colors mixing these two together. And I'll just show you from one of the previous videos this is the color again that was mixed using those two colors and here as well um, and then here are all of the beautiful swatches and mixes not these ones but these ones here too and again those two colors together here so you can get a big variety of them and there's a beautiful kind of like a burnt sienna ish type of a color you can get from mixing the seaweed and the coral reef as well anyways um thanks for watching these have been my favorites um share down below what your favorites have been for the month of june and i will speak to you soon